In this unit, we're going to look at compound statements and connectives and truth tables for negation, conjunction, and disjunction. Recall from Unit 1 that a logic statement is a declarative sentence that is either true or false, but not both true and false. Compound statements connect two or more logic statements with what are called connectives. And connectives include the words or, not, if, then, connecting two statements, also if and only if. And here we have some examples. The sky is clear and it is raining. That's a compound statement connected with and. And some more examples, I have a cold or I have hay fever. If it is cold out, then I will need a jacket. She was not happy and she was not poor. And here we have both the words not and also and included connecting these two statements together. We have symbols for these connectives. For and, we have the upside down V, and for or, we have something that looks like the capital V. Also remember from Unit 1 that negation of P was written with this little squiggly in front of P. So here we have a statement, I have a cold or I have a hay fever. And that could be written as P or Q, where P represents I have a cold and Q ha represents I have hay fever. The statement, I don't have a cold and I don't have hay fever, would be written with the squiggly P and then the upside down V and then the squiggly Q to represent negation of P and negation of Q. We also have a special symbol for if then. Okay, on to if then statements. If P represents the statement, I have a cold, and Q represents the statement, I feel sick, we would represent if I have a cold, then I feel sick with P and an arrow pointing to Q. That arrow represents the if-then relationship. We can also combine if-then statements with other connectives and other statements that are combined together with connectives. Here we have an example where A represents I'm a monkey's uncle, B represents I'm a math teacher, and C represents, I am a math student. And we have the statement that says, negation of A, if negation of A, then B or C. In words, this would be, <clears throat> if I am not a monkey's uncle, because we have the not, then I am either a math teacher or a math student. And with a little practice, you'll get the hang of this. Maybe go to the text and do some additional problems that deal with combinations of statements like this. We also have what's called a biconditional statement. That's the if and only if statement. Now what this means is we're taking if A then B and combining with if B then A. So if A then B and if B then A is the same as A if and only if B. We represent A if and only if B with A and an arrow, a double pointed arrow in between A and B. And here I have P if and only if Q is represented with P and Q and the double pointed arrow in between them. We're going to talk about this more in subsequent sections, but right now all you have to remember is that you replace if and only if with the double-sided or the double-pointed arrow. Now let's look at some examples where we convert words to symbols and then also where we convert symbols to words. Let's start with the first example. My car is slow and needs to be repaired. F represents my car is fast and N represents my car is new, and R represents my car need, needs repair. Well, if my car is slow, that means it's not fast, so that would be the negation of F. And since the word in between the two statements is AND, we use the upside down V, so negation of F AND, and then R represents my car needs repair. And you notice I put the extra parentheses around the negation of F. 
that just clarifies it. So you don't have a statement that says the negation of the quantity f and r. It's just f that's negated, not the r. Now in the second example, it is not the case that if my car is fast, then it needs to be repaired. When you see it is not the case, that means put a negation and parentheses around the whole works. So here the conditional is if my car is fast, then it needs to be repaired. That's F with an arrow pointing to R, but we have it is not the case. So we put the negation sign and then parentheses around that whole statement. Just remember that when you see it is not the case, you place a negation and then parentheses around the whole works. And then the last one, which is kind of tricky. It is not the case that my car is old if and only if it is not fast. Let's leave out the not the case for now and look at the part my car is old if and only if it is not fast. Old is the negation of new, so it's negation of an to represent old. If and only if is that double pointed arrow. And negation of f is that squiggly and the f, or which represents not fast. But then we have that it is not the case in front of it. So we put that little negation sign and then parentheses on both sides of that inside part. Now let's move on to a couple more examples where we convert symbols to words. F represents my car is fast and N represents my car is new and R represents my car needs repair once again. We have the statement F with the arrow pointing to negation of R. Well that's an if-then statement. If my car is fast, then my car does not need repair and that would be the word equivalent of that. In part B we have a compound statement and then compounded with another statement. The first part is F and negation of N. My car is fast and it is not new. Then we have OR, which is the V. My car needs repair because R represents my car needs repair. So the way I word that is either it is the case that my car is both fast and not new or it is the case that it needs repair. And putting that either it is the case clarifies that that part is separated from the other part. In part C, probably a little simpler than part B, the statement is F with the if and only if arrow and then negation of R. So that's my car is fast if and only if it does not need repair.